and welcome to Out of the Darkroom on Adorama TV. I'm Ruth Mejber and today I'm joined again by Monica Fabiancek and we're chatting about wet plate collodion photography. Monica, thank you for sticking with me. Mm -hmm. um, so today you're going to be explaining to me about the techniques involved in wet plate collodion. Okay, step one in the darkroom would be uh, preparation of glass. It doesn't have to be in the dark room, to be honest, but that's the that's the step one, basically, okay, of the process. Let's get us to a dark room anyway, to be safe. <laughs> so you've got your glass, and then you need to prep it. And what am I doing to prep the glass? Uh, it has to be very, very clean. Okay. Okay. Uh, that's the that's the first thing. It has to have uh, sanded edges, so that you won't cut yourself or will not cut your gloves when you work with chem with chemicals. Very smart. And it has to be spotless, really, because if there's some grease or some marks on the glass. In the worst case scenario, your lovely image will just peel off oh. from the glass. What usually happens at the very end of the process. So you, you are very happy with what you got, and then you put it into wash and it flows oh, away. Oh, disaster! Okay, so, so the glass, super clean it takes glass. Super clean glass, yes. Um, and then once you've got this and you've got your uh, chemicals ready, the first step is uh, pouring uh, the collodion. That's the that's the chemical. Okay. The collodion, the collodion. Uh, on the glass. It's a syrupy uh, liquid which sticks well to the glass, and it leaves it leaves on the surface of the glass a very thin, transparent film. Okay. Uh, this thing is not light sensitive, so you can do it actually in uh, normal light conditions. Pouring. So it's not light sensitive at all. It is at the at this, at, the, at this at this, at this uh, stage. stage. Okay. okay. Right. Uh, so you, you just need to, you know, you just pour a puddle in the middle of the glass, you spread it nicely along all the corners and, um, and that, uh, that's ready then for sensitizing. So then the, the glass uh, with this thin layer of chemicals goes into a silver nitrate. Ah, okay, okay, right. Silver nitrate makes this collodion uh, light sensitive. Light sensitive. Okay, so it's the silver nitrate then that's uh, like absorbing all the light then. Is that it? Uh, yes, it, 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 it's making like a, in, a, in a chemical reaction, the salts included in, in collodion mix are becoming light sensitive. Cool. Uh, and then uh, the process needs to be continued in a red light conditions. Okay. Once the plate is in, in silver nitrate. And um, uh, after a buff in a silver nitrate, about three minutes, the plate is sensitized and it's ready to be loaded to a holder, which then goes to the camera, yeah. and then you can make your uh, exposure. Okay, right. So everything needs to be prepared, like your, your setting needs to be prepared before that, because in total you would have, depending on the conditions that you work in, you would have uh, 20 minutes to take a shot. If it's warmer, you've got less, because the chemicals are drying faster, oh. and they need to be wet in order to achieve an image. That makes sense as to why they call it so, wet plate then. Oh, it's yes. all falling into place now. <laughs> yes, okay. Yes. So this uh, this is now dipped in silver nitrate, put into the holder. From that, it's still wet. You've got 20 minutes to kind of expose it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So you rush out then to your to portrait your, sitter, to whoever's your, yeah, there. Yeah. Yes. And then what are your typical exposures? It depends. If the, if the mix is fresh, uh, I would say about five seconds with... Um, with this camera and the lens, it's a 300 uh, lens um, and aperture 4.5. Okay, so five so seconds of 4.5 with fresh chemicals or with fresh chemicals. That, that's what I reckon. But if you, I, I, may, I mostly shoot these portraits with artificial light. Okay. And uh, I'm using um, a continuous light um, Falcon eyes with. Um, energy saving bulbs and I got two, two lights which are like 1200 watts each and this light would give me probably somewhere between 10 to 15 seconds exposure. Oh. Um, so it's pretty long yeah. uh, exposure so you need, uh, you need to um, get your, your sitter still for this time. Yeah, so, so you can't I would have children or anyone in front of the lens then? Or uh, yeah, it's, it's tricky with children. <laughs> like I've got some tricks. Do you? <laughs> you know. What are your tricks? Uh, the tricks with children would be just to uh, get them 
uh, against uh, <laughs> lean back or something. Lean back against the wall, and I, I also would use a, a, a cup between their head and the wall so that they can. <gasps> That's fascinating. You know, so they have to keep it, keep it in it position. In between head and, and the wall. Oh, look at you. That's genius. So that, that, that works. That's that brilliant. works well. Okay. Like, it would be possible to, to use flesh, very, very powerful flesh. There are mm. people working with flesh and collodion. But I kind of like the fact that you um, record for longer. And you, you, really, you really achieve a different portrait when you expose you know uh, a person yeah. <laughs> for 10 seconds or 15 seconds uh, in comparison to just a snapshot this is a fraction of a second it's completely different portrait to me you know then after we have uh, exposed it mm. what happens then uh, i go uh, to the dark room and i had t and i have to develop the image straight after this so uh, so it's just um, development it's uh, pouring a developer on the glass this one is a bit this one is crucial basically in the whole process and yeah. it's a bit a bit tricky because you need to pour um, a tiny amount of developer on the plate it, it needs to be just right amount just to cover the plate the whole plate but not uh, it's not good to pour too much because it can wash out the image and the silver oh. uh, so it's just right amount on the plate okay. and you develop for about 15 seconds uh, keeping the plate in a in a rotation in a so in it doesn't movement. settle in one exactly. spot and yeah. over develop yes, a yes. certain area and then when you uh, when you start to see um, some details coming from the shadows, that's the moment to stop. Okay. And you just stop by pouring the uh, tap water on it. And um, Cause if, if you put too much developer or, or you know, let it settle or something, you've ruined the image, right? You don't like have another one of these. Yes, like, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Just start all like over you can, again. You can say that's, you know, that's a, a, an art artistic uh, add-on. Oh yeah, <laughs> because oh, I it, meant it to came, do that. <laughs> <laughs> because it doesn't have to be ruined, you know, it may be, it may come, came out interesting. You okay. Know. Uh, so there's but, flexibility, there's yes, artistic, but, yeah. Yes, but <laughs> if you're aiming to get a perfect shot, it, you probably would repeat it. And then the, the image, um, and that's a very also magical uh, part of the of the process because after development it looks like a kind of a negative milky negative and when you put it into a fixer mm. it's when it's uh, revealing the, the final you know final okay. image so the metallics that we're seeing here reflected is the silver nitrate is it or, or yeah, what? That's yeah. the silver, i think you can see it a little bit more in in this guy here which is fabulous so there's a lot of um he just has this glowing silver. Kind yeah, that's a metallic silver. It's yeah. amazing, isn't it? I absolutely love it. I painted uh, back of the image with uh, with a black paint, like acrylic paint. Okay, and, and is it is it similar to what you would have done for this one, or how is this one done? This one has got already. This is a glass with uh, black backing. Uh, so that's that's how I, I buy uh, I buy this in this form. So, so the glass is we call black. it black glass, but it's not stained glass. It's it's like four millimeter clear, clear glass with a with a okay. black film at the back. Okay, because I can kind of like see through it. This is fascinating. Yeah, yeah. yeah you must go through like a lot of glass. You have a lot of glass in your <laughs> yes. life. Um, it's it's absolutely fascinating. So would these after you've um, fixed them, developed and fixed them, would they be waterproof? Because I can. I'm looking at this and I can see a layer of obviously chemicals on top of it. How watertight is that? Uh, they are not really waterproof. You can remove the image if you are not happy with the image. You can reuse the glass. Oh. So just after fixing and washing the image, it's very fragile. The, the, the um, emulsion side is very fragile and you can scratch it very easily. Yeah, okay. Um, I put that down. <laughs> <laughs> when it's dry, it's much, much more uh, resistant. Okay. Uh, and a very important step of the whole process is varnishing um, of this image because what you end up uh, with is a very uh, good quality print which should survive another tw tw uh, 200 years, you know, like um, the examples that we have from the 19th century, right? Wow. Uh, but if you leave the image unvarnished, it will oxidize after some time. Okay. It will turn bluish, blackish, you will, you, will, you know, the image will, will start to disappear. Uh, so uh, it's, it's important to varnish them. And if you varnish them, um, 
they 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 should they should be great. They, they well, if last. there's examples out there that are a hundred or two hundred years old, then yeah. I think for the longevity of it, this is brilliant. And Ob- there is no no post processing. You just you just you know that's the print coming out. Yeah, it is what it is. There's no Photoshop in there, is yeah. it? You won't have clients asking. It's like, oh, can you remove this and can you make me skinnier? It's mm. like, no, you are what you are. You have to deal with it. And then, how how old is your beautiful camera? Uh, the camera would be about hundred. Hundred years old. It's not. Uh, it's not a nineteenth-century camera. It's not a wet plate camera. It's. Um, it's a camera that was used with uh, more modern processes. Uh, but uh, but it works well. So it's a hundred years old. We've <laughs> got to give it a bit of slack. What would the difference be then from just a large format camera and you you mentioned a wet plate camera? What's the main difference uh, there? Yeah, the wet plate camera. Uh, this would be a little bit. Uh, earlier, right? Um, and the wet plate, you can recognize wet plate camera uh, with the holder that goes with it. And uh, wet mm, plate, um, basically, the holders for wet plate would have little um, glass corners or wires, just like I'm using for oh, fixing. Oh, like in your frame, so it, yes, it slots in to, and doesn't move. To hold the plate, because the idea is that the less the plate touches the holder, the better, because uh, uh, otherwise different impurities from the holder can get into the camera while the chemicals start to dry. Okay. You know, so if you've got a holder that's uh, got, and I, I do have for this camera, but I, I just keep it clean, yeah. it's got a continuous support. Okay. So I know that it was already used with a dry plate, okay. you know. Really, you want the less contact by having little yes. metal bars that way instead of being secured yes. all the way around because yeah, yeah, that's where yeah. the dirt can come to. Okay, so that might be like a little tip for someone who really wants to give this a go. And then in terms of, um, would you have any tips or anything for maybe someone coming to your workshop who wanted to go away and start this? Was there, is there anything that you'd say to them? Maybe just have patience. <laughs> They, they really very often get very nervous during the workshops yeah. and their hands would shake. Um, but it is excite, excitement, you know. Um, you, you do every step with your hands mm. and all depends on how you're going to pour the chemicals. Um, I would say, you know, um, it's good to try it because it's, it gives you a, a, a completely different uh, look at the photography. Uh, because you have to slow down, uh, it, it, it's, and it's really like it's really, really slow. Really slow. Okay. Yeah. So you really have to think in advance. What do you want to shoot? Because you don't have time to, you know, if you if you assume that you've got half an hour for a single shot. Yeah. And um, you, you really want to know. Yeah. Because there's a lot of preparation a lot, uh, around. So, um, so that may be. That, that's a good lesson, I think, for uh, for each photographer. So that just just stop for a moment and mm. make sure that that you know, uh, you know, because te- technique is one thing, but at the end there is just an Im- there is an image, and it's important what the image is saying, right? I love that. That can be applied to all sorts of photography. Just slow down and look at what you're photographing. <laughs> oh, listen, thank you so much. I'm really, thank I you. feel, I feel like I've learned so much from these chats today, and I really appreciate you. you coming in and chatting to me. Thank, thank you. you very much. You're very welcome. Well, that's all we have time for in this episode. I do hope you enjoyed the show. If you'd like to brush up on your own photography skills, check out the Adorama Learning Centre. And if you want to watch more videos, then subscribe to our channel. Thanks, and I'll see you again soon.